Hello guys, and today I'm going to be doing a video on Forger 3D, some more sculpting stuff. Now this is just some tips and tricks on uh, Forger, so yeah, make sure to like, subscribe so that you don't miss another tutorial like this. And, well, it's not that I'll see you next time yet. Anyways, let's get to the tutorial. Now first tip is to use a variety of tools because if you don't, this will happen. Because if you know how all the t other tools work, and you just aren't using them, let's say you only use the inflate brush and stuff, you may shorten the brush size, and it just won't do anything. Um, you know, don't stick to one brush or a tool. You want to actually use a variety of tools, because if you don't, um, that can really mess up your sculpt, like, because it can... Because of a lack of variety, it won't, like, stick out... You know, it'll just be like a big blob, like you see here. Now, if you use a variety of tools, like, let's say we use clay, then let's say we use, like, you know, pinch, then we say, like, scrape some, and then, like, use the standard, which I never use. Don't, don't, you shouldn't use this, guys. Um, it's kind of useful, but I don't recommend it. And you could, like, you know, use some scrape, maybe some flatten, flatten things out. Um, pull. And, yeah, guys, this tip is just to, like, give you a tip on, like, you know, how to give, like, a variety of tools and stuff. Because if you don't use a variety, it end up being a big blob or just, um, may not look as good as it would if you used a variety of things and spread your scope out so yeah i'm just saying that because that would be really helpful if you just use a variety of tools it also could make the integrity of your sculpts better so yeah i'm just showing you guys what it's like to use a variety of tools versus non-variety this is this is non-variety uh yeah you don't want that it looks like a big black widow but okay stop um but yeah guys I was trying to say is you need you should use a big variety of tools for sculpting in Forger 3D. Let's move on to the next tip. All right, guys. So the next tip is that we should let's say like you know um, we have we're just sculpting regularly regularly, right? And you know, say, let's say we'll just like scrape this up, add a little bit of detail. And while we're doing that, um, let's just say, like, you know, you're like, oh my god, I've been sculpting for hours and stuff. This is a motivation tip because if you like overdo it, it can like make you not want to do it anymore at all. And so, I recommend guys you use it when you need to or want to, and then you kind of stop when you need a break because if you don't. You'll just get tired. Maybe it will affect your sculpts, too, because you're not putting as much good effort and energy into them. Because you're not motivated or you're just tired. Um, and you're just really, like, tired, tired yourself out with doing these sculpts. And that could be a bit of a problem with, like, you being lazy with things or whatever. So I really recommend you, you know, put some actual time into your sculpts. But, like... Make sure you don't tire yourself out, because there's always a next day to do the rest of the sculpt. So, that was tip number two. Now, let's go to tip number three. Alright, guys. So, tip number three is you want, to, you want to do things to your preference, which you actually need for the specific type of project you're doing. Because maybe the project you're doing needs, uh, you know... A specific thing to work right maybe let's say you go here it's like you need the wireframe or then you could switch to the grid but not the wireframe because you may need a grid let's say you have a whole bunch of objects let's just duplicate this and then duplicate it and then let's say like you have a lot of objects and you'll need the grid to like map them out correctly and um and you may need all that to be, like, mapping your stuff out so that you know exactly what order you're putting it in or whatever. Use the preferences and filters and stuff to your advantage, the display settings, because you may, like, need those 
for specific purposes that you're doing or whatever. So I'm just recommending that you actually use what you need or use the preferences that you need for what you're doing specifically because it can vary and different settings could probably mess up your project depending on what you're doing. So just be careful, make sure you're using the right preferences for what you're doing. And uh, so yeah, that's tip number three. Okay guys, so tip number four is you wanna consistently save your project. So let's just say we add a sphere, right? And you know, since we added that sphere, we need to save. You should always do save as because when you save it as something, now you unlock like the incremental type, but hold on. Yeah, so save incremental or save as. What this will do is basically like, okay, enter your new C name, let's just do ball one, right? And then once you do that, save has been successful. Now let's say you make some changes, like add some, you know, mesh to it, pull it a little bit, make it look like a Forger logo. And let's just say since you're doing that, it's like, okay, um, now you need to save again, save incremental. And now what this will do is go to the thing and since it's saving incremental now you can choose an incremental t save to um do that so you can have you can use ball one if you made a mistake on ball two and maybe save this and then save this as um overwrite maybe and then what this will do is we'll overwrite ball because hold on so we'll overwrite the ball two because you picked ball one and then you overwrite the other one with the thing let's say you made a big mistake and so yeah that's how that works you want to consistently save incrementally or at least save as so that you have different saves that you can go back to like oh i made a mistake on ball one let me change ball one maybe overwrite ball one whatever so saving is a big tip so let's move on to the next tip the final tip actually okay guys so the final tip of this thing this little tutorial here is to use to use the masking tool now this brush does basically makes it so you can't draw where the mask is and so let's just say we paint a big giant mask over here and notice this mask isn't actually adding anything to your project what it's doing is basically filtering out where you can draw on your object so now let's say if we put inflate right and this actually this masking can be very useful if you're trying to create like eyeballs or something because this is used now you can't color near it so it's always going around it and you see how it's beveling in there and uh this can actually be a very useful mask or mask can be a very useful tool for whatever you're doing especially if you're making like eyes or a simple object um that may need some like outline around it and so this tool um could really help now that's all the tips i have for you guys make sure to like and subscribe for more forger tips and tutorials and I will see you guys next time.